the previous episode, I showed you how I test, and for the most part, the pattern I showed there works really well for me, but there are times I come across things which are a little difficult to test, and here I want to cover two of those such things. The first one being testing the current time, and then after that I'll cover handling external web requests and tests. Let's get started, shall we? Now in the previous episode, I created this user spec you see here, and I created it pretty quickly and kind of skimmed over the, the specs. But in this episode, I want to focus in detail on one of these such specs, which has to deal with the current time, and that is this one right here. Basically, the user needs to save the time the password reset was sent. So whenever I send a password reset request, that uh, it should store the time it was sent. It should be present. Now this be present matcher here, internally our spec is just simply calling the present method on the object making sure it returns true. Now this is a method that Rails provides and it just checks for the existence of the object, make sure it's not blank. It's not actually checking that the time is the present time, so it's not that present, uh, it's just checking the existence. So really you could argue that this is an incomplete spec because it could be any time. You can see in the implementation here in the user model, I am setting the sent at to the current zone's time, but I could set this to any time and the spec would still pass. So ideally we would want to do something like it should equal time zone now, but this obviously won't work because uh, it's going to be a different time from the time that value was actually set. Now when faced with a situation like this, I like to first ask myself, is it worth making the test a lot more complex just to make sure that it, you know, it's a full spec? Uh, and many times if the implementation is very simple, like in this case, I think it's acceptable just to check that it's present because there's a very little possibility that there's going to be a bug in this one little line because I know exactly what it does and I'm setting this. And if there is a bug, then I can delve into testing it further. But there are times, you know, you do want to test the current time, so let's investigate how we might do this here in the spec. First of all, you can see I have trusty guard running in the background, and that spec truly does fail because are, there is a very slight difference in the two times we're comparing. Now a great gem for handling this kind of situation is time cop. Uh, this allows you to do many things with the current time, including freezing the time. And that'll do just what we want, so that way the time won't change but between the time it's set and when we actually do the comparison. So the first thing to do is to add time cop to your gem spec. So uh, inside our test group here, we'll just add time cop inside of here and make sure to run the bundle command to get it installed. And then it's also a good idea to go inside of your spec helper and in the before each call, uh, just make a call to timecop.return. So this way it returns it to an unfrozen time or whatever other changes you might make to it. And then we can just jump into our user spec and call timecop.freeze. And that way it'll stay at that specific moment in time so we can do the comparison properly. And hey, would you look at that? All of our specs pass now. Thanks, timecop. Now it's kind of funny, on Twitter I saw a number of reports saying that their tests were failing while they were at the Ruby Kaigi conference in Japan, uh, just because they switched time zones. So how do we make sure that doesn't happen to us? Well instead of traveling halfway around the world, it's a lot cheaper to just change your time zone here in the spec. So uh, if you want to change a time zone locally, maybe in a spec helper, you might want to just set time zone to whatever you want. Uh, another way you can do it if you just want to sort of change it temporarily while you're inside of a spec. Uh, what you could do is call time.useZone and then pass it any value. Let's say we're in Paris. And then inside of this block, it'll be just like we're in Paris. So then we can make sure that the spec still passes even though we're in a completely uh, different time zone. And as you can see, the specs still pass. Awesome. So in summary, whenever you're testing against the current time, always make sure that you have something like time cop so that the time is always consistent and that way it doesn't change whenever you're dealing with daylight savings or something. And consider testing against different time zones uh, to check for that as well. So now let's move on to testing with external web requests. And I'm actually going to base this off of a real life problem I encountered while working on the Railscast site. Uh, specifically, this feature right here when you roll over the movies here, notice that it shows you the file size in parentheses above it. Now it's actually fetching that file size from an external uh, web server because I'm hosting the movies elsewhere. 
So I'm having to do an external web request here, and I want to show you uh, how I ended up testing this. So here I want to work on this through a little example app where I have a web request resource, which takes in a URL. So let me just paste in the URL to that same movie and say create web request. And notice it returns the URL and the file size is zero bytes. Because this actually isn't implemented yet, we actually have to implement the feature where we are sending the external web request and fetching uh, the file size of that given URL. And you can see that in this web request model here, we have this content length method, which is currently just returning zero. So let's work on implementing this uh, test first. Now there are several gems that can help out with testing external web requests, but one of my favorites is fake web. Uh, this allows you to easily register a URI, and then when you make a NetHttp request for that URI, uh, it basically returns whatever you stubbed out in your fake web call instead of doing the actual uh, request. So inside the gem file, I'll just add fake web to the test group and run the bundle command to install it. Now inside of my spec helper file, I like to do some more configuration of fake web. And one of the things is to call fake web dot allow net connect and set that to false because this will basically not allow any specs to uh, do some external HTTP connection. Uh, this is great because if you know somehow something slips through, it doesn't really slow down my whole test suite. Uh, it'll let me know that it's actually making a true connection to the web. Now something else we need to do is inside of our before each call here, we can call fake web dot clean registry. So that way it's starting with a clean slate every time and not using any of the settings we did on previous specs. So now we can use fake web inside of our spec for our web request model. What we want to do is just make sure that our web request fetches uh, the content length. And inside of here, you can just call fake web dot register URI. And then you, the first argument here is the type of request you want to make. Here I just want to make a head request because that's just fetching the header information, which will include the content length. And then whatever URL you want. So let's use example.com and then any attributes you want. So content length and set it to one, two, three. So now let's make a new uh, web request object, setting our URL to that same address here. And then we can make sure that our content length returns uh, one, two, three, just like that. And you can see that of course this fails because our content length currently returns zero instead of one, two, three. Now to get this passing, we just need to change this content length method so that it makes a true net HTTP request. So I'm just going to paste in some code here to move things along. And notice it's doing net HTTP start using that given URL that was uh, passed in to the model. And we're just calling request head uh, to get the response and calling content length on this uh, to fetch the content of that given URL. Now Rails doesn't include net HTTP, so if you're using it, you'll need to require it yourself. I like to do this at the top of my application.rb file here, just call require uh, net slash HTTP uh, to get it in. And well, would you look at that? Now our spec is passing. And if we try reloading our web request page here in the browser, you can see that it now reports the proper file size. Awesome. So if you ever need to handle external web requests in your tests, uh, fake web is a great solution. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it.